friends and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Eva and it's been a little bit. I haven't filmed in two weeks. Two weeks just really felt like a long time. I've been on vacation with my boyfriend, like we went to, it's basically called the Europe Park and it's an amusement park in southern Germany themed around the different countries in Europe. It's such a cool amusement park, it was so much fun. But before we went on vacation, <laughs> I burned out a little bit. I was trying to like prepare so much content and film so much in advance and get everything ready before I'm going on vacation. And then I'm also doing the podcast with Sophie where I was prepping a lot of it. And it was all a little bit too much. Like I just kind of overdone it a little bit. And I didn't allow myself any breaks at all. So I was a little bit burnt out. I am now back with fresh energy and you might have not even noticed that I was gone, but to me, like, it really felt like a long time. And now I really feel refreshed and recharged. So now that I've told you a little bit about my last two weeks, uh, let's get into my April wrap up, which is, I know it's a little bit late and I'm sorry. <laughs> But I still wanted to let you guys know what I've read. So in total, I've read nine books in the month of April. It was such a good reading month. Like, I am so proud of myself. So I started the month off with finishing an audiobook that I was currently reading, which was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Janet McCurdy. This book was so heartbreaking and it's still with me. It's a memoir about Janet McCurdy's journey of acting and acting at iCarly and her relationship to her mom and how toxic it was and how abusive it was. Everything that happened to her in her childhood and why she's not really loving acting anymore. Basically never did. I still can't stop thinking about this book. It's insane. I will never be able to watch iCarly with the same eyes anymore. So if you're still want to enjoy like re-watching Akali from time to time. I would not recommend reading this book. It was so eye-opening, like what's happening behind the scenes of certain TV shows, especially like child acting is really a horrible thing if I think about it. Like letting children imagine certain scenarios and then living through them, even if they've never really experienced something like that, is so horrible. I don't know, I've never really thought about it, but it's obviously me messing with their mental health. I mean, so many child actors are saying that they are having a really messed up mental health because of their childhood. Like some people don't read memoirs and I totally get where they're coming from, but I personally did rate this book and it was a five star read for me because it was so intense and incredible. And Jeanette McCurdy is such a strong woman. Everything she has gone through and that she's still like recovered from all of it, even if she did it in maybe not the most standard ways. Also, it's talking about certain triggers like abuse and eating disorder. So if you're struggling with that, I don't recommend reading this book. So, and then I started my 24 hour readathon at the beginning of April and um, tried to catch up with my Goodreads reading goal. I'm gonna link that video at the end of this one so you can watch it if you want to. But yeah, I've read some very interesting books in that video. <laughs> First off, I started off with The Cruel Prince. It was a little bit hard for me to get into because I felt like sometimes the descriptions of the surroundings weren't enough for me to like completely get enveloped in the story. There were a few little things that I was like a little bit meh about. I don't know, Jude was a little bit too badass for me and she's like the main character. She was a little bit like too much like oh yeah, I'm gonna kick his ass and I'm so badass and I'm gonna show him. I do enjoy it in some ways, but I'm personally not like that, so I just can't relate. And it just makes me feel super weak at times. I'm just like, I would not be like that if I were living in a fantasy world. I'm just a super anxious and insecure person. <laughs> but that was like more of a personal thing, you know? And my bangs are always messing with me a bit. 
but yeah, if you didn't know, The Cruel Prince is about a girl or like three sisters being taken to the fairy world at a very young age, living there and surviving there and certain things happen and a lot of plot twists happen in this book and my mind was blown all of the time, especially towards the end. And after that, I have listened to the worst audiobook and the worst book I have ever read or listened to or whatever. And uh, that book was Verity by Colleen Hoover. <sighs> if you've seen my 24 hour readathon, you know how I'm feeling about this book. But it was bad. Like bad with a big B <laughs> or basically bad in all caps. <laughs> the abuse in this book was super traumatizing to me personally, especially because the mother who was abusing her child, her very like young infant child, she was abusing that child because the child was apparently autistic and was having like autistic traits like not showing enough emotions. And it was really triggering for me because I am a neurodivergent person and I have ADHD and especially because it was done in such a way that was so unreflected and like completely out of touch. <laughs> like, it had no sense at all except to make the story more catchy and like to blow your mind and stuff. Also the book was packed with super disgusting spice scenes. <sighs> It was really bad. I don't recommend this book to anyone. I hear a lot of people on like TikTok and Instagram completely raving about this book. And I mean, everyone should love what they love. Like I'm not judging, not really anyway. I support you if you love this book. That's fine by me. I just don't understand like if you if you love this book like please explain it to me okay like i would just like to know why anyway that was a basically a zero star book for me but i had to give it a star so i had a, it was one star but it was the worst book i have ever read and i'm i've just deleted it out of my brain basically uh except for this wrap up right now so let's move on the next book i have read oh yeah we're now getting to the physical books. Um, also, I'm a little bit stiff at the moment because I've hurt my neck while sleeping. Don't ask me how, I just did. Um, and I can basically n not move really well, like I can't... Oh, it's really hurting really bad. <laughs> so if I'm moving weirdly from time to time, that's why. So then I have read Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Osman. <sighs> My emotions for this book are, I don't know, I can't even express them, like my feelings. I'm just, I, I love these characters, I love this graphic novel. It, it was incredible. I have not much more to say, honestly. Like the feelings that Alice Oseman is able to transport through a bit of drawings and like the magic that this book made me feel was Unlike any other, I just, I, I just can't explain it. I, I have no words. It was incredible. It's so good. <laughs> then I have read Days at the Morizaki Bookshop by Yasatoki, by Satoshi Yagizawa. It was really cozy. I was listening to lo-fi music while reading this. It was super nice. Like it was so chill, and it also was like one of these books that makes you like reflect your life and think about your life choices and just feel this very cozy vibe and like everything is gonna be okay in the end and I really needed that after Verity. <laughs> it was so good, it was really fun and also fast paced, it was super short. The one thing I didn't completely love about this was that there were certain characters introduced towards the end of the book and I wasn't really able to build a connection to these characters because it was just like a really tiny part where they were introduced but they did play a pretty big role in the end and I was kind of sad about that because I would have loved if I've gotten a little bit more connected to these characters but it was really hard with just a few pages. And then I've listened to the audiobook of The Swimmers by Julie Otsuka. I don't know, I didn't really enjoy this one. It was not for me. I probably would have DNF'd it 
if I didn't do like the 24 hour readathon, but it just wasn't my type of book. The writing style just wasn't for me and also the story progression didn't go exactly in the direction I was expecting. It was very focused on the topic of dementia. First it was about these swimmers uh, always going to this one pool and swimming and like how their whole lives basically revolve around this pool and going swimming there and then this crack appearing in the pool and then suddenly we jump into like a dementia clinic and it's all about dementia from then on. And it was really hard because dementia really makes me really anxious. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's a super scary topic. So yeah, it wasn't really my cup of tea. I've rated it two stars. And then I finished a book that now is one of my top three favorite books of all time. And that is Tilly and Technicolor by Maisie Eddings. Maisie, Maisie Eddings, yes. You can see how much I have tapped this book. This one is about a girl with ADHD trying to find her place in life, going on this trip to Europe uh, to work with her sister. She's meeting this guy on the plane who is like super specific about certain things he likes and doesn't like because that guy is autistic, as she will later find out and we also find out from the first chapter, so it's not really a spoiler. It turns out they're both doing an internship for the same company. Yeah, and they're falling in love. Like it's about a girl with ADHD and a boy with autism and it's like the representation was incredible. Like I have no words for this. It was so relatable to me and I felt so seen in both of these characters actually because I totally understand Oliver's fascination with creativity and colors and editing and I could just see myself in both of them. It was also a lot focused on the romance, so if you're a sucker for YA romance, definitely pick this up. <laughs> and then last but not least, I have read Yellow Face by RF Kuang as a buddy read with my dear friend Sophie. And it was so funny because she was actually halfway through this book when I started reading it. We actually wanted to read six chapters every week, but I was kind of behind because I was overworking myself so much, like I said. I then binged the whole book basically in two weeks, which wasn't that fast, I know, but it still felt like I was like running, <laughs> trying to keep up with her. Because we're going to an Art Kwong event this week and I'm super excited for it. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be my first author signing Ever. I only read English books and I'm living in Germany and English authors usually don't come to Germany So yeah, <laughs> I'm just so excited for this. Honestly, it's... Oh, okay Anyway, this book is about two authors. One author is super famous She's a Chinese woman and the other author is a white woman and Not really famous and then the Chinese woman dies and the white woman steals her manuscript about Chinese labor history, I think. I don't know, I can't remember. And we're reading this from her point of view, from the white author's point of view. And she's been super racist from time to time, or not from time to time, basically all of the time. And I'm like, mm. she's like, oh yeah, I was never really successful in my life and I'm trying to be successful and I just want to make something out of my life. And I can understand that, like, I understand that if you're at a certain point in your life, you just want to figure your life out. But the way she did it and the thoughts she was having and how she was super racist all of the time was so horrible. It made me so disgusted by her and hate her so much. But I thought it was made in such an interesting way because out of Kuang herself, is Chinese. She wrote this in such a fascinating way because it makes you really understand why it's not appropriate for white authors to write about certain topics. RF Kuang has done it again. I was blown away yet again. The only thing I didn't really like was the ending. I felt like it was a little bit rushed but besides that it was a pretty good book. 
I was enjoying it. So as it turned out, I completely forgot one book I have read in April during my 24-hour readathon, and that one was a graphic novel called The Sad Ghost Club. It's about two ghosts who suffer from social anxiety and are overwhelmed by life, which was super relatable to me, and the illustrations in this book were just so cute. I've rated it four stars and can't wait to read the next book in the series soon. So yeah, those were all of the books. Oh, wait, wrong side. Those were all the books I have read in April and I'm super happy with this reading month. I'm sad that I'm a little bit behind on my really Goodreads reading goal yet again because I've gotten into this burnout, but I will try to find my way out of it. Also, I've basically read nothing so far in May because of my burnout, but I'm hoping to change that in the last two weeks. So wish me luck. If you enjoyed this video, it means so much if you left a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.